would enjoy harming or hurting their neighbors? Anyone? Alhamdulillah. So nobody loves to harm their neighbors, right? So what happens then? I mean, what does it mean even, even if you, har you harm your neighbor? What do you get out of it? And if you don't, what do you get out of it? So let's hear from the Prophet وسلم, in Hadith Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala <coughs> قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فلا يؤذي جاره. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم says, He who believes in Allah and the last day must not harm his neighbor. Look at the statement over here. من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر. If you truly believe in Allah and on Judgment Day, then don't harm your neighbor. See how how significant the statement is, جماعة. I repeat that again. مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلَا يُؤْذِي جَارَهِ Whoever believes in Allah and the final day should not, should never harm his neighbor. And then he continues, صلى الله عليه وسلم, saying, وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And if you truly believe in Allah and the final day, فَلْيُكْرِمْ ضَيْفَ Honor your guest. Honor your guest. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And whoever believes in Allah on the final day, فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْكُدْ Let him speak good or remain silent. Whether you speak that which is good, or better be quiet. There's another narration in which the Prophet وسلم, he said, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيُحْسِنْ إِلَى جَارِهِ Whoever believes in Allah on the final day, should be kind, فَلْيُحْسِنْ which means be generous, be kind to your neighbor. Opposite to the first narration. The narration of the Prophet says, don't harm your neighbor. This one now is asking you to take the extra step. It's not just you don't harm your neighbor, instead you do what? You do good. Basically, you take it uh, to the next level, inshaAllah ta'ala. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهُ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ said the same thing about, their about the, the guest and also about speaking good or remain silent. So from this, what do we understand? Let's go back to these three, three things. First of all, he said, La jara. You should not harm your neighbor. What kind of harm that could you know, be inflicted upon your neighbors? Like what? What do you guys think? We spoke about this last night, but <coughs> let's elaborate more a little bit. What, what kind of harm people might actually put on their neighbors? <coughs> Parking the car in front of the driveway, especially mashallah, if you have a big family and you have four cars, one for you, one for your wife, one for your mother-in-law, one for your father-in-law, and one for your son, one for your daughter. Then you get it to have the whole neighborhood, right? So in this case, what do you do? You make sure that you don't harm you know, your neighbors by parking their spots if you know, they need their spots. What else? How about noises? How about noises? You have a party, mashallah. And you go past midnight, and the party in the backyard is going to baraka, barely starting especially 4th of July is coming right now. So you bring your fireworks, start you know, blasting everything and so on. Is that considered harm? Yeah, Jama'ah, would you harm? Is that harm? Of course, obviously. Okay, what if people maybe don't necessarily do these things? What about being curious about your neighbors? Like what? Like every time your neighbor parks the car, you, if you have a balcony or a window, you go on the window to see you know, what he's bringing with him. And next time you see him in the masjid, you say, MashaAllah, I saw you bringing many bags today. What's going on? <laughs> you can have a potluck dinner, probably. You have a party or something like that. SubhanAllah, I mean, some people, they have this, this weird yeah, curiosity to the extent that they put even their, their <coughs> door cameras, door cameras, the opposite direction, to the extent that they need to see what people, wh what do they do, SubhanAllah. Now, this is weird. This is offensive. And it's absolutely not acceptable. When it comes to the neighborhood, one of the duties we have to observe is satr al awrat that you cover you know, the faults and the errors or even the awrat of your neighbors. What if their family comes in or out and this and that, and subhanAllah? You shouldn't be. What if people keep curiosity, also keep asking about their neighbor's affairs? يعني. Just every time they see them, hey, hi neighbor, how are you doing? You know, I haven't seen your, uh, uh, seen, for example, your kids around for so long. Asking for the well-being of the neighbors, it's okay. How are you doing? How's your family? This and that. But going beyond that to start investigating and you know, just want to know everything about their life, that's not of your business. That's also harm. So as much as we can, stay away from harming your neighbors. 
The next step the Prophet is asking now, doing good, which we talked about the other day. Like being nice, share food with them, whatever that you can show them, inshallah. The second thing the Prophet mentioned here, فَلْيُكْرُمْ ضَيْفَ Honor your guest. When, when we say honoring the guest, what does it mean exactly? That means the guest, the moment the guest comes in, of course, you need to have some sense of hospitality in there. Okay, so what does it mean to honor the guest? Is there a specific standard for honoring the guest? The answer is no. The standard of honoring the guest is goes back to what? To the culture. Whatever the culture of your time, the culture of your place, the culture of your neighborhood, whatever that you belong to, is considered hospitality, and you offer that hospitality. In some cultures, hospitality is just a cup of tea, cup of coffee, and khalas, that's what we can afford. In some, in some other cultures, hospitality is mashallah, they slaughter the, you know, an animal for you, and you bring it on the top of the rice, and, and you have to eat. If you don't eat, they're gonna shoot you. <laughs> because they take it seriously when it comes to showing their generosity. You have to eat our food. So it depends, right? So what is the standard? The standard is, is whatever is considered culturally acceptable in that time and that you know, community. This would be hospitality, for the, for, of course, for your guests. Obviously, the Prophet says, if a guest comes, you should give them their prize. And the prize meaning the prize is basically the top of the hospitality. So if you offer your guest, don't offer them you know, from what you guys don't eat. Because alhamdulillah, we have guests. Let's give them what they don't eat. That's not hospitality. Instead, you give them from the best, al the best of what you have. Okay, what if the best of what we have is just leftovers? Is there anything wrong with that? Of course not, absolutely. If it's what you have at home, alhamdulillah. In the Arabic language, we say, al min al-mawjood. al min al-mawjood, which means hospitality, generosity, is from what we have. This is all what we have today, this is what you're gonna get. We're not gonna, maybe you can afford to do anything more than this, so alhamdulillah rabbi Is it allowed for you to do excess and way beyond your, the norms of the culture? Obviously, yes, it is acceptable. Even the, the, the ayat in, in the, the story of, of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, when three people, when he invited three people, three young men to come into his house, he didn't know they were angels, right? But when they came in, what did he offer them? Ijl and Hanid, an entire cow. Can you imagine a cow for three people, for four people? So that's a lot, right? It's okay to go beyond if you want to, as a sense of hospitality, but obviously, of course, don't waste anything. The Prophet is saying, فَلْيُكْرِمْ jara." Then, I mean, فَلْيُكْرِمْ ضَيْفَ When the guest comes, you should honor your guest. The least is actually a cup of water. The least is a cup of water. I know some cultures, they, they, uh, they ask the, the guests if they need anything, right? They say, do you want anything? They would like to drink something. And if the guest says, no, thank you, khalas, they don't bring anything. In the, in the Muslim culture, generally speaking, that's not a sufficient answer, right? They're gonna get you something whether you like it or not. You're gonna have to drink it, you're gonna have to eat it. Again, it go, we go back the norms, to the norms, inshallah, of, of that culture. The last thing the Prophet ﷺ talked about here, qala, وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْكُتْ Whoever believes in Allah and the final day, let this person say good or remain silent. And that in itself, of course, requires tons of tons of hours just to explain the meaning of this. Obviously, saying that which is good is that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If what you're gonna say is not pleasing to Allah azza or at least it's not considered neutral, then just stay, stay, stay silent. If you, whatever you're gonna say is gonna hurt somebody, is gonna backfire on you, then don't say it. Okay, so what about people, they say, Alhamdulillah, Sheikh, I don't say anything bad. I only type it and text it to people, that's it. <coughs> Texting, you know, on, on uh, social media or comments or all that stuff, is that also considered the, does it fall into this hadith? Obviously, of course. Don't tell me, no, I'm just texting it, so I'm, I don't say it, really. It's the same thing. If you know that what you're typing, it is going to be also sound bad when it's, when it's, you know, pronounced, when it's spoken, then just don't type it. Don't text it. Don't say it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it's pleased with it, let it come out. If not, keep it for yourself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who listen to the speech and follow the best of it, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Any question, Jama'ah? MashaAllah, everyone wants to be silent, yani, alhamdulillah. <coughs> yes? <coughs> Yeah, 
Uh. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> no, but th this is not this is not a right culture anyway. Yani. Uh, if if your neighbors now want, it's not gonna eat, you're gonna shoot them basically, our or your uh, your guests. Actually, it, it is very common and very serious in some Arab tradition, some Arab culture. And I've seen it with my grandfather. He didn't shoot the guy, but he just almost yeah, and he hit him with something. <laughs> really, it's because eat. And the guy says, uh, I don't want to eat. The, my grandfather almost threw him with whatever he had like, in front of him. Well, because you're in my house, you're going to eat, basically. That's how serious hospitality is for them. Uh, obviously, it's not mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> to do that. If you don't want to eat, if you're the, the guest, and you feel that you, you, you're not, let's say, you don't want to eat, at least, at least please the host by approaching that food. Like, for example, grab a piece, for example, or just one or two morsels, and, and that's it. That's more than enough. Just to please your, your, your host, yani. Wallah alam. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, that's not neighborhood. The driver is not neighborhood. The driver is next to you. It's a different story. That's haqqu tariq the right of the road. But uh, the neighbors who are the neighbors and so on, I want you to go back three, four ahadith, three, four videos, inshallah ta'ala, back. You will find that definition of the neighbors there. Now. Uh-huh. Yeah. So in India now they're complaining about Fajr Adan is too early, so they need to silence the Fajr Adan. You think that's in India only? You have no idea, man. They have the problem in Kuwait. Now it is in Saudi Arabia. Some people are calling to shut the, the Fajr Adan down, actually. In the, the core of the Muslim land, they're asking for this. It's not an Indian problem yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. So if, if, let's say we're in the Muslim neighborhood and we have non-Muslim neighbors living around us, is it even permissible for us to use these loudspeakers for Adan al-Fajr? Honestly, it's, it's uh, these ahkam, what the ulama, they call them, they call them ahkam al-sultaniyya. Ahkam al-sultaniyya, which means rules of the sovereignty of the land. So they're not a fiqh issue in that sense, because the fiqh issue is to call the Adan. Whether you call the Adan human voice or loudspeakers, as long as you call the Adan, you're done. Do you have to use loudspeaker for it? Honestly, it goes back again to the regulations in the state and the city. If the, let's say, Muslim countries, there are tons of masajid all over. In almost every corner, there is a masjid. So when these masajids are blasting the adhan together, especially, let's say, next to a hospital or something like that, it might be an issue. So if, let's say, if a Muslim state wants to regulate that and say that, you know what, fine, however, only the major, the major masajid will call the adhan. Let's say you have, for example, uh, five big, they call them al-masjid al-jama', like the big Jum'ah masjid, and the others are musallayat. Musallas don't call the adhan out loud. Let the out loud you know, adhan come out from the major masajid. That's fine, that's, fine. that's acceptable. Or they might actually uh, decide on the volume. It says make the volume at the adhan to that, for example, uh, uh, that level. So it would be acceptable by all. If there is regulation to make it acceptable, that's fine. Uh, so as Muslims, I would believe we should really accommodate. But at the same time, we should exercise our right to call the adhan. Wallahu How does adhan sometimes the neighbors like that? The blasting of the music and everything like that. Yeah. Before I talk to them, I can True. I mean, uh, when I lived in El Paso for some time, I had a neighbor actually underneath. I was living in an apartment at the time. So uh, uh, the neighbor underneath, mashallah, I mean, he's, he's unemployed, uh, single dad, he has two kids, doing nothing really. And all night, this is when he starts his, his day, yani, at night. He plays the music all night, almost, and uh, had three kids. So every now and then we kind of like, so I talked to him a couple of times, said, you know, sir, this and that, blah, blah. And the guy said, yeah, sure. But he never stopped. I then, you know, talked to the, um, uh, uh, the, the apartment complex managers, they send him, you know, notices a few times that please, you know, keep it down, blah, blah, blah. And even they came to him and talked to him in the, uh, because I called him at night, says, come guys and, and check for yourself so you could see it. 
so they, they realize, okay, that's true, it's, it's too loud. But the guy, he never stopped. And at, at one moment, uh, they asked me to call the police on him. So I said, fine, call the police. So you have the right to also to exercise your haq and bring your haq back to you, if it was to inform authorities. Wallah. Last well, if, question. If, if, if a non-Muslim lives next door to Muslim, Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's not about being a Muslim, non-Muslim. Even Muslims these days, actually, they complain about the adhan. Now, I know it sounds bad when we say, uh, you know, we have to shut down the adhan and this and that and so on, but we have to be considerate as well. If we are really having an issue, if the adhan is extremely loud with these loudspeakers, then we should consider that. We should make it, let's say, to a certain volume. Again, uh, distribute that into different masajid. Not every masajid should call that on. Specifically in some communities, when you have a thousand masjid in, in the same neighborhood, subhanAllah, mashallah. And the sad part is that all these masajid call the adhan uh, at different times. Not even at the same time. So by the time these masajid are, are done, the masjid down there start calling the adhan. And then by the time this one is done, the other one starts calling the Adhan. Why? Because they seem that they cannot call the Adhan together. So they wait for, you know, for the Adhan, the loud one to, to, to kind of finish, then they start calling the Adhan. Now this is different, it's, it's this organized system. It has to be found, yeah, more organized. Some countries, they, they have what you call the universal Adhan, like in Jordan, for example. They have a universal Adhan in the capital, Amman, which means they have only one Adhan for the entire city. The entire capital, Amman, you talk about thousands of masajid, and it's only one, one mu'adhan. Well, not single mu'adhan, but one adhan basically for the entire city. There's one central masjid in the capital, and all the other masajid in, in, in the country, or at least in the, in the capital, connected to this masjid through the FM uh, channel. Ten minutes before the adhan time, they turn on to that channel, and then when the Mu'addin calls in that central masjid, everybody basically broadcasts the exact same adhan. So they finish together. And if you listen to it, subhanAllah, it's even actually more beautiful because it's, it echoes all over, yani, and the same Mu'addin echoes all over, subhanAllah, in a nice, beautiful way. Wallah, I'll say the last one. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> 